Hey everybody, what's poppin'? Thanks for listening to the Bless Up Podcast. We really do appreciate it, and we really hope you enjoy this week's episode. Well, folks, welcome back. Welcome back. To the Bless Up Podcast. Yes. We are excited, and man, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. And have coffee. Yes, coffee. Yes, sir. A good cup made by yours truly. So well, TK, I'm just going to simply start off with it happened again. Uh-oh. I'll, I'll, I I'll, don't really tell TK what exactly I'm going to say to start off a podcast. I feel like I always have some kind of story to share with you <laughs> when we kick these off. But my life is nothing if not story worthy, I guess. But yeah. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I have long hair. I do. I have not cut my hair in about two years. And so... For anyone that may be living under a rock, there's a pretty popular movie that came out earlier this year called The Jesus Revolution. It talks about a historic revolution of uh, basically hippies getting saved and going into the churches. And I love the vision of it because it's like you have these clean cut people in suits that have been going to church like their whole lives. And they're worshiping next to like a hippie that may have like this weird clothing on, long hair and like no shoes on. But... Didn't know this movie was coming out when I was growing my hair out. But when I have my hair down, I, I kid you not, this happens at, when I have my hair down. If I'm out in public at least once a week, where someone will ask me, were you in the Jesus Revolution movie? I, I, I'm not even joking when I say this has probably been asked 15 times to me since this movie has come out. And usually I have it bunned up, but the rare times I do have it down, I always get asked, hey, seen Jesus Revolution? I have. Were you in it? Were you in it? Which, I mean, I take it as a term of endearment, I guess. Because in the movie, they were the hippies were getting saved. And you know why I really take it as a compliment? Is because the guy that plays Lonnie Frisbee, the, the, the main hippie in the movie, he actually plays Jesus on The Chosen. So if you think about it, in a sense, I'm being said that, hey, you are... Almost, you're like Jesus, not Jesus. You are like Jesus. You, you got. Look, you look like. I'm, I always tell people if you look like Jesus, if Jesus is Walmart, I'm like Dollar Tree. I'm not even Dollar General. <laughs> I'm Dollar Tree, Jesus. Like yeah, the knockoff of the knockoff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Wayfair Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I it, seriously. Um, even going to see it, th- this was this is a noteworthy story. I think you'll enjoy. So. I've been looking forward to seeing the movie, and it came out, I want to say in March, early March. And so Emily and I went to the theater to see it, and she was coming from work, so we met up at the movie theater, right? And so I'm there that day, and I got my hair down, just waiting for my wife to get there so we can go see this movie. And I overhear, like, a group of older folks. Long story short, they were actually at, in California, when the Jesus movement was taking place. Super cool. And they were just saying, yeah, I can't wait to see it. They look over at me as I'm by the door waiting for my wife. Oh, there's an extra from the movie right there. And I couldn't help it. I I started laughing. (laughs) And they came up to me and said, no, no, we meant that as a term of endearment. You know, we were actual hippies that were actually at this movement. And so uh, seeing you takes us back. And so I I got a laugh out of that, that actual hippies from the Jesus movement that were randomly in Harrison to see this movie on the opening day were saying that it took them back to a time in their lives where we had the biggest spiritual movement in our history, which I think is really cool. And now I'm plugging a little bit. Go see the movie. It's honestly become one of my favorites. And it is about such a powerful movement. And I mean, I want to see that movement happen today. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. I guess that, that made me, like, low, since discount, Jesus, am I discount famous? No. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Anyway, I thought that was worthy of note. I've always got stories. What's going on with you? I'm always sharing stories. Oh, you... just living life to the fullest. Can't, can't really complain too much, just... We have a special guest yeah. that you might hear during this Nico, podcast. 
Nico's uh, running around in the background, so we're trying to keep an eye on him, but he's always keeping me on my toes. Um, you never know what he's going to get into. He's like a little toddler. Like, if there's something on the floor that he doesn't need to eat, this is, he is going to find it. This is off the cusp. Can we... Can you pick him up so we can show the people? Like he, they, you sure. probably heard him because he's in our first podcast. He was making a lot of noise with a squeaky you toy. He's me. always making all kinds hey. of noise, so I think it's hey. fitting as TK is chasing him around. Like this is honestly what we need on camera right now. Give me a, give me a sit. <laughs> I'm not cutting any of this hey. either. <laughs> hey. Give me a. TK's chasing him around like a creeper. <laughs> trying to catch him but this is nico who is always making the sound so ladies and gentlemen our first guest on the podcast nico, this is can you say hi this is nico king you got tk and nk nico so tk before we go to first break tell them why you call nico nico because i feel like your the people that love you which is everyone that watches this will really appreciate the story so he's uh, just named after um the Nuggets player, Nikola Jokic. Which is TK's favorite basketball player yeah. on his favorite basketball team. So, yeah. so Nico. Since we don't want people having to come in and say, hey, this is Nikola. Yeah. <laughs> just know Nico. Nico is cool. Yeah. So this is, honestly, we're going to talk about the Lord and all kinds of things. But when people ask, what was this week's podcast about? Oh, they finally showed Nico. The real star of the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, now, now Nico wants to sit in my lap now that I picked him up. Yeah, this could be an interesting one, folks. Yeah. This could be an interesting one. So if you hear anything in the background or whining, now that he's gotten a taste of stardom, he may just <laughs> he may just want to be part he of the podcast He may take over now. the show. And, uh... <laughs> I can see it, honestly. But anyway. Well, guys, we got a special one for you today. Um, we, we've had a passage on our heart for the last little while. I... I should say I've had a specific passage on my heart for a while, but I've been sharing with TK, and so I think it's starting to really resonate and hit home with him too. And yeah. Well, it's so. cool because this passage is something that we actually read really recently in our Bible study. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it stood out to us then, but the fact that, like, even, you know, a couple months later, it's still just resonating with Zach, I think it's really cool and powerful. Yeah. So obviously, there's a reason why it's resonating with his heart. So, so we're gonna take really you, share it. With yeah, you. take y'all along on the journey with us. So we're excited. So we're gonna take a really quick break. Make sure Nico's head hasn't gotten too big from getting a taste of stardom, and uh, we'll we'll dive right on in when we get back. So we'll take a short break. Be right back. So we're going to be discussing Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And a lot of you probably heard this message. Um, this is the introduction to the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, which is the greatest sermon ever written, period. Okay. I And like TK said, we were going over this. It's probably been a month or two ago in our Bible study, walking through Matthew, I could not shake this from my spirit, and just even as we were doing a new study in Genesis, I've just continued to come back to this and deep dive into it. But just talking about the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, this is kind of the introduction to this. But man, in this in this sermon, Jesus hits on everything. I mean, he hits on how we should be as believers. He's talking about what the law is and how we relate to it. He's talking about anger. He's talking about lust. And what that means for us as believers about divorce, about vows, revenge, loving our enemies, giving to the needy, prayer. Like, he hits on everything, which makes this, again, the greatest sermon ever written. And as someone who loves to preach, like, I draw, I draw inspiration when I come to this. But what we want to talk about this, this morning, evening, whenever you're watching this, is just the first 12 verses. Because I think it is the perfect intro to the Beatitudes. So what I thought I would do is I I will read this, and then we can just start breaking it down a little bit. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. So, Nico, you ready? Okay. So if you guys want to get your Bible or follow along on you version, but I'm going to be reading Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, the intro to the Beatitudes, or as TK called them, the blessed. What did you, how'd you call it? The, 
the I don't he doesn't remember. remember. Now, he said before this, I'll read in the, the blessed chapter or the blessed. Oh, oh the blessed. The blessed. He calls it the blessed. Yeah. So, anyway, here we go. Matthew five verses one through twelve. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those, uh, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. I mean, that's just the intro to this sermon. Yes. And it is so powerful. But what I love about this, and this is some things I've shared with TK, outside, if you're like, if you're reading your Bible and you're still not getting it, if you're praying and you're still not getting it, you're listening to worship music, you're doing all these things you should be, and you're like, I just want to encounter Jesus. I love that God does not give us just one option on how to encounter him. There's only one way to the Father, and it's through Jesus, but Jesus wants to make himself known to us. And I love that he basically gives us a list of people that we can seek here uh, to, to find him if we need to. So if you want to find Jesus, these are the type of people you can look for in order to do so. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like, okay, so I want to find Jesus. How is a way I can do that? Okay, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So why would I want to search for someone like that? Well, because they're blessed. Okay, what's so special about that? Well, every good and perfect blessing comes from God. So when you're encountering these people, you're literally encountering people that have been touched by God, which you're encountering God that way. So blessed are the poor in spirit. This one is one that I think does confuse people sometimes. It's like, okay, so you're saying these are the types of people we should look for to encounter God. Why would I want to pursue someone that is poor in spirit? And why does Jesus say that theirs is the kingdom of God? And I wrote this down in my Bible. I think people misinterpret what poor in spirit actually means. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily deprived of having the spirit within them. But I wrote this down. It's people who recognize their own spiritual poverty and need for God. Basically saying that I am poor in spirit without God. If I don't have him, I am indeed poor in spirit. And that's what that means. It's recognizing that you indeed need God in order to have a fullness of spirit. Does that make sense? And so that I thought was a very powerful start to, again, the most powerful message sermon ever wrote. And before we continue, do you have any thoughts on that opening verse? No, it's just, um, just like you said, you know, Poor in spirit, like, and you just look at this verse singularly. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Like, the great thing is, like Zach said, whenever we are, whenever we do feel like we are poor in the, our spirit and we seek after God, yeah. like, you know, the great thing is, all we have to do is seek God. The Lord in, like it says, the kingdom of heaven is. It's open to everybody. Yes. You just have to seek heaven and seek the Lord to get it. Mm. It's just such, it's open to, because really even, even those that, you could even use this as like a, um, what's kind of like a parallel to like sinners. You know, they're poor in spirit too. Yeah. But whenever they seek after God, they can have, the kingdom of heaven. That's good. So that, that'll preach right there. Just that the first. Oh, seriously, you well, can do unsaved. That's right. I, meant oh, I knew. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Yeah. So just to clarify, uh, I think each of these you could just do a sermon on yeah. for a couple of months, honestly. Yeah. But you know, uh, the next verse, if you're, if you're okay with me moving please. on, you know, I really love this verse. You know, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You know, um, this. I, when I 
read this one and made me think of my my nana who has kind of had a rough past year um she had like towards the end of last year she had to have open heart surgery and you know have this big open heart surgery had to have multiple bypasses um and it was it was just a rough recovery for her obviously and you know there was times that you know it was really hard for her and you know especially but you know there's times that she felt alone she felt you know mournful you know um but you know one thing that she had to lean on was the comfort of the lord Come on. because and you know she is she's doing a lot better now um she's getting you know she's where she can um, walk around and everything and doing really good her heart's healed up and but even in the even in those times whenever you seem lonely and it seems bleak you know god's comfort is here for us and mm. i think that's just a beautiful verse right there well i think so often and i love what you said your nana leaned on on the lord during that time and i think so often in our world when we are mourning we go to different avenues to comfort our morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll be real. Like, it's not always to this level of seriousness. Some people will go to alcohol. Some people will go to drugs. Some people will go to pornography. And because it's a distraction from what they're mourning from. But with God, when we come with him, it says, actually later on in Matthew, says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But God wants us to not just not substitute it but honestly encounter it hand in hand with him and in that he's going to walk us through it and give us rest on the other side like your nana went through a hard time but she took god's hand and walked with him through this and came out on the other side not just comforted but with an in closer intimacy with god because she walked hand in hand with him through something so why do you seek someone who's mourning it's because you know that if they're mourning they're going to go after God in the midst of their mourning, and you're going to encounter him. So that's why you'd want to maybe seek someone who is in mourning that's a believer. And, you know, I've heard stories, too, of the, of the people who, who seek God through their mourning. They can be so encouraging. I've heard stories of people who, in the church, who have gone through cancer. Mm. And I've had other people say, man, to be going about these individuals say, I've never met someone who had so much faith, you know, to have just be so positive yeah. despite what they're going through. And I think that's another reason why we, you know, why these sort of people who are, who find God's comfort throughout their morning and uh, are still showing that positivity. You know, if you're around those people, they will in, in, inspire you, you know, to do the same. That's so good. And you know, I think that's something to rest and courage things. I'm sure we can all think of someone like that, you yeah. know. Um, and moving on, I, I think, when I think of this next verse, I think of you and my wife. Are the, and actually, you, my wife, and your wife are the first people that come to mind. But blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. My version says, blessed are the humble instead of meek. Just to... Well, do, different versions. Yeah, um, just to do a parallel of what, you know... Which is good, words. because I, when I think of... My wife, when I think of you, when I think of your wife, I think of people that may be quiet on the outward, but when you get to talk to them, they speak with, it, it's like you guys don't waste words, which I've shared on here before. You guys walk in the utmost humility. You are very thoughtful. You're good listeners. And you genuinely carry yourself in a way that is, I'm going to serve first. That's your heart. And I love that. And it says that if you have that kind of heart that's giving, then you're going to inherit the earth. If you keep giving and giving, the Lord says, you know what? Because of that, you're going to inherit the earth. Because what did Jesus, what did God say? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And so when you're acting with the same humility or meekness that the Father did by giving, you're going to receive something even greater, which in this case says the earth. You're going to inherit everything by giving away everything, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that's very good. And you know, I feel like I feel like we could do a whole podcast on humility. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's something that we plan on eventually doing. Yep. That's a deep topic. Um, but because it's something throughout our Bible study that we've seen countless, 
countless of times be an example of mm -hmm. the different people we've read about and how the humility has caused God to bless them. Yeah. And then you see where people's arrogance has cursed. caused them to stumble. And that's on their own doing. They've cursed themselves by acting in the opposite of what God yeah. calls us to walk in. <laughs> if so that's a way to look at it is, okay, so if I walk in humility, as your version says, I'm going to inherit the earth. So what does that mean? If I'm going to walk in arrogance, I'm going to walk in, I'm basically going to inherit nothing. Yeah. Nothing that matters. Nothing that matters. And it's so easy because it's so easy to think about our needs and what, what do I want to do? But really, we need to be focused on what's what's best for, what does God have for me? Mm. How is this going to benefit what he has for my life and, yeah. what, and others? How is this going to benefit the people around me? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. no, that's good. That's good. Moving along in verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And I love, I love the wording here hunger for who hunger and thirst for righteousness and i want you to think of a time you were so hungry you were like uber hangry right and like when you got that food in your stomach it was even if it was like garbage if it was fast food in that moment it was the best food ever right or if you were like you know thirst like you've been out running and playing all day you're a kid you come in and you are like just parched yeah. and that that glass of tap water that you really quick turn the faucet on and start drinking from in the moment is the sweetest tasting thing ever, right? Mm -hmm. So when I read this, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. In the same way, we should be pursuing living as closely as we can to what scripture tells us to in accordance with Jesus that only he can fill the need mm -hmm. like that. Because it says, for they will, they will be filled. And I just love thinking about that, that if we go after God in that same manner, in that same frame of mind, that we've got to have it, that Jesus is the only one that can fill us. That the fact he says we're going to be filled, the scripture says in a parallel to this, those who seek me find me. And so if we're seeking him with everything, we're going to find him. And when we find him, blessing follows. Yes. That's why I said blessing. You know, I kind of, and I touched on this yesterday, my, te oh, not yesterday, last video, and my um, testimony, you know, just, whenever you just completely give your life to the Lord, it is amazing how He provides things, and you, in the moment you just, it's just jaw-dropping whenever mm -hmm. it happens. Yeah. And, but, you know, that's, whenever you seek His will for your life, it's the best will to be seeking Absolutely. Well, and, and to tie along with what you did speak on last time, when you're seeking your own will for your own life, it's lonely. Yeah. It's a lo and it goes right back to... This is... And I don't think there's... And it's not a coincidence that this is right after the humble thing. Because mm -hmm. these go hand in hand. Uh -huh. To be humble, you have to seek God's righteousness. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, I didn't mean no, to no, no. Because I, you, you literally beat me to the point I was going to make. It's, it's just that. I think... When we are acting in arrogance and trying to fulfill ourselves, it's empty and lonely. But when we're acting in, you know what, I'm going to walk in humility. I'm going to walk in meekness. And I'm going to hunger and thirst for righteousness to be as close, you know, to walk hand in hand with Jesus as closely as I can. And in that, blessed. You called this the blessed. What happens when we do that? We're blessed. That's why you'd want to seek someone. If you, I'm sure all of us, even if you're a non believer watching this, I guarantee you could probably pinpoint someone you know that is seeking after God in a way that is real and authentic. I remember when I... Sorry. No. <laughs> you get up just this... No. <laughs> All I, I, I had to do is get up and he like gone. But the fact you just got up... No. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am in tears now. Nico, get down. Down. Oh so you can cut that out. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to, I'm no, sorry. you're good. You're good. But no, I I, uh, I love that. And I think they go hand in hand for a reason. And it's so cool that Jesus like says these things in the order that he does. Because I feel like the order is meaningful as well. Yes. And so, again, you are blessed when you do these things, which is so cool. So... Do you have anything to add before we move on to the next? We can move on. 
So verse seven says, and this is one that maybe is hard for some of us. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mm. So why would you, first That's off, good. seriously, why would you want to seek someone who's merciful? First off, because you're going to be able to identify that really easy because in today's culture, there's not a lot of mercy and grace that's shown. And I think those people stand out. And those people, okay, what makes them stand out? Well, they're acting in a way that is opposite of what the culture says. And in so, they're going to be blessed because they're acting in how Jesus tells us to. And it says, for they will be shown mercy. You know, I'm sure we can all think of a situation in our lives, even as believers, where we were so belligerently angry at a situation or someone that it was like, <laughs> I'm not forgiving them. And it's like, even though you may not see that person or whatever, like that situation or person is just living up here, rent-free, and worse, it's living in our spirit, rent-free. But there is a freedom that I'm sure some of us can also relate to, and I know you and I can, where we give, we, we offer and give mercy and forgiveness, even if the person doesn't deserve it. But for us, why do we do that? Because first off, Jesus told us to. But also, it sets us free. And I think that's why Jesus says this. It's blessed are the merciful, because when you show mercy, I'm going to set you free. Yeah. But also, it's in correlation to what he later says in, in the gospel, where he says, if you want to be shown forgiveness, you got to forgive here on earth. If you don't forgive here on earth, how can I forgive you yeah. up in heaven before my, my father if you can't even forgive your brother here on earth? You know, and I think when I think of forgiveness in general, I think, you know, maybe we think about the things that we've done against the Lord. You know, like, I know I make mistakes every day. Yet, God is so merciful in His love and kindness, you know, to forgive, you know, because, you know, I try to you know i have all i'm trying to do right you yeah. know but you know we you know take that forgiveness from the lord but then someone does something wrong to us and then we have and then we have a hard time to, using that same grace for those mm, people whenever yeah. it's like you know we expect it from god but you know we don't ex want to hold ourselves accountable to it but you know sometimes you know, it's a good reminder that, hey, it's the least we can do for all of the forgiving and mercy God has shown us, you know. Well, and to go perfectly, and I mean perfectly along with what you just said, what does it say in the New Testament? It says, he has new mercies for us daily. Daily. Because he knew we'd need them. You said, and it's true for me, it's true for everyone watching this, you will fail daily. Whether you realize it or not, you will fail daily. We are walking in an imperfect creation. You will fail. But the Bible says he offers us new mercies daily, and he does that because he knew we'd need them. And I, 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 as we've received mercy, we need to also give mercy. And we receive mercy every day. So what does that mean? Maybe some of you are watching this, and this is the point you need to take away. That yes, you can seek someone who's merciful and encounter Jesus that way, but maybe you need to be the one that's giving mercy so that people can see, oh, wow. I know they've been done wrong or they've had something that has really hurt them, but they are acting in a merciful way. And in that, you're going to get an opportunity not just to tell people about Jesus, but you're walking in a way that Jesus tells us to walk, which is pretty impactful. Mercy, mercy and grace can truly change the culture if we would just get a hold on that. That's another thing we could just talk for a while yeah. on is just grace and mercy. But I think maybe to wrap this one up, if you give mercy, like you, if you... You're receiving mercy daily, so give it daily too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good way to do it. And that's a person you can seek if you want to encounter Jesus as someone who's merciful. Continuing on to verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Whew. And notice what it says here, because I think people can maybe mistake this. It says the pure in heart. It doesn't say the perfect heart. Yes. The perfect in heart it is the pure in heart. Because we can have the purest of intentions, but still mess up. Yeah, because you know, we are going to mess up. We are. We, we can't be perfect. No, it, it is impossible. There's only one person who walked this earth perfect, and we're reading his sermon right now. <laughs> okay, it's not you. It's not me. None of us will reach this level. But if we are with a pure heart seeking after Jesus daily, seeking to grow our relationship with him, seeking to act in humility, mercy, grace, forgiveness, love, walking in the fruits of the Spirit— 
That's a pure heart. It's seeking after God. Not a perfect heart, but a pure heart. And when we have a pure heart, it says we're going to see God, which I think is powerful, which I think makes sense because, when we're again, when you're seeking God, you're going to find God, Scripture says. So if you have a pure heart that is pursuing Him, you're not going to have to run very far to encounter Jesus. It's basically like, all right, God, where are you at? And he'll just be like, well, I've been here the whole time. You're just taking the blinders off and recognizing it now. So it's a beautiful, beautiful concept, mm -hmm. truthfully. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guarantee there's so many people that we can think of that are pure in heart. For me, first person that comes to my mind is my wife. Like, my wife is not perfect, but her heart is sincerely pure and after God. And honestly, it's, it's, it's arguably the quality that draws me the most to her especially coming out of the lifestyle that I did before Christ because I didn't know anyone that had a heart as pure for Christ until I met Emily. And it's like you're naturally, as you're seeking God and wanting to grow, I found someone like that, you know? She stood out. <laughs> she was pure in heart and she stood out. And she was blessed because of that and I, I am now blessed because of that. Thankfully, we became one flesh. So the blessing she was getting out of this, now I get to receive. <laughs> so... That one's, that one's a good one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So those are the people you can also look for yes. to encounter Jesus. Do you have anything more to add on that one? I don't. Moving on. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Mm. Mm, peace. I think, again, the order of this is so perfect. Yeah. It's so perfect. In today's culture and society, I think you can turn on the news and realize we're living in a time that is anything but peaceful. Yeah. We live in a culture where if you don't believe what I believe, mm -hmm. I'm done with you. Yeah. Come on. Seriously. And that is not the way we should live. Yes. No, we should be peacemakers. And mm -hmm. I think this kind of even goes, ties in good with the most mostly thing we were talking about, too. Uh, you know, like, like we said, all these qualities, you know, come together. But, like, you know, we just, we have to make peace. Like, we have to get along. And, you know, people are going to believe differently than us. People are going to think one way or the other. And <laughs> even me and Zach have a lot of things that we yeah. disagree on. But at the end of the day, like, the, we're, we're called to love each other. Mm -hmm. If we have difference of opinions, that's okay. But, you know, no sense of, you know, starting a Facebook war over... Don't be a you keyboard know, warrior. Something that, at the big scheme of things, you know... It's a back road issue. Yeah. Like, let's, let's just be kind to one another and try to make peace instead of cause, you know, arguments or whatever. You know, it's just so easy, it's so quick to do that so often. And I think it's, and I, want, I don't want this to be taken out of context, too, because I, I agree with everything he just said. That does not mean you cannot be firm in your faith. In fact, yes. the word, it says be firm and secure in your walk with Christ. The word says that. But I think there's a way, like, me and you can disagree about a lot. Mm -hmm. But we can sit here and have a cordial conversation about that. You give me your perspective. I give you my perspective. And there's been times I've swayed you. And vice versa, you swayed me sometimes. But there's also been times that we've, we've just mutually decided, okay, we disagree on this, but that's okay. And we still decided to shoot a podcast yeah. later, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think that's that's what TK said beautifully. It's, it's keeping the peace even when it feels like there's not peace to be had. Yeah. And that makes you stand out. And you're blessed because of that. And that's someone that you can, okay, I want to find someone who's like Jesus. Oh, they're a peacemaker. I noticed that, yeah, they have a lot of people that may disagree with them, or they may disagree with a lot, but they keep the peace. And, uh, and it's and that's a good way to witness, too. How are you supposed to witness to a sinner if you're so... If you just sit there and argue against what they're doing? Yeah. And say, well, no, you need to be... Instead of just saying, hey... Instead of trying to make peace with them and, you know... You know, trying to find a common ground so that you can actually then minister to their needs and be a blessing into their life in in scripture and hopefully the greek and hebrew scholars don't crucify me for how i'm going to try and go about this if i do and get it incorrectly but 
the word shalom was a greeting that they would say amongst each other. So if me and you were two fellow Jews, we'd come to each other and say, shalom, and that meant peace. So you're literally starting off a conversation with peace be with you, peace be with me. And then if you said shalom, shalom, it meant perfect peace. So act in shalom so you can represent shalom, shalom. Yeah, that's good. You know, because God is perfect peace. And when we are acting as a peacemaker, it says we are children of God. And I think if you're a child of God, you're definitely going to stand out as someone, okay, I can talk to them if I want to get to know Jesus. So that's a good one. And then 10, this one's a tough one. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I've noticed, man, literally the first week of me being saved, I cut out a lot of things out of my life that didn't need to be there. And even on social media, I would share like Bible verses as I was starting to dive into scripture for the first time. And I would have people from my old life that would comment on it or reach out to me and honestly attack me. And I know that is so minimal compared to what our brothers and sisters that are representing the faith are going through as far as persecution goes. There are people being killed. There are people having their homes burnt down. They're having churches burnt down that are having to hide in secret that if they mention the name of Jesus could be killed just for their faith. So what I'm mentioning is very minimal, and I'm saying so mystical as far as what persecution means for us here in our side of the world. But I say that to say, the moment you decide to represent Jesus, it's, it's counter to what the culture wants because you're now representing all these things that we're reading about today and talking about that are opposite of what the world says. And because of that, you are going to be persecuted. But guess what your reward is? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. You're, despite everything that may come against you, despite potential death, despite having your home burnt down, despite all this, if you keep the faith, if you pursue righteousness, guess what? What you're going to get in heaven doesn't even compare to what we have in this fractured creation. Yeah. And yeah, you have to stay strong. Stay, stay strong. Firm and secure. Yeah. Stay firm and secure. And that's going to be tough. But honestly, these are people that also stand out for Christ. Okay, I want to get to know Jesus. Oh, wow. You know what? I, I've seen them get persecuted, but they stand firm in their faith. Those are people I really, honestly, those are the people I wanted to talk to when I first got saved the most because I'm like, okay, they're battle tested and they keep the faith. I want to talk to them. And in that, truthfully, I think the more you get to know God, the more secure you get in who you are, that it's like when everyone's attacking you, it just, it doesn't, yeah, persecution hurts, but it's like I know who we are and whose we are and what we have to look forward to in heaven one day. Just getting the microphone. Okay, that, does that do anything on the <laughs> That honestly, it's like, okay, yeah, this is happening, but this, this suffering on earth is temporal and we have eternity to look forward to in heaven with our Father, you know? Yeah, so. yeah very well put. And, you know, and, so, and I feel like sometimes whenever you are persecuted, it's really going to make you have to like put an emphasis on some of these because your spirit may get kind of trampled a little bit. Yeah. You know, you might mourn it, be mourning a little bit. You might, um, you might be you know, have to show spirit. some mercy. Yeah. You know, so you might be poor in spirit and need to really lean in God. Yeah. So again, the order of this is very specific. I think very well, well put, TK. Um, I think to wrap this study up verses 11 and uh, the first part of verse 12, I think, again, ties all this together. Blessed are, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. When you first read that, you probably think Jesus is out of his mind. <laughs> So when you are being insulted, persecuted, and all kinds of evil is being uttered against you, rejoice and be glad. What? <laughs> but I think it's because you understand all these things we read about in the first 10 verses. Yeah. That makes it, okay, you know what? I am being, people are insulting me, but it's because I'm standing up for something that I know to be true. And even though... I'm standing up against something that the world says is right, and I know it's wrong. I'm going to stand up against it. Yeah, people are going to insult you because that's a natural response. So you can rejoice in that. You know what? I'm being persecuted, but you know what? It's because I'm representing my Jesus in the midst of a culture that rejects him constantly. 
So I can rejoice and be glad in that. And you know what? Yeah, I'm having all kinds of evil uttered against me. But you know what? The same thing happened to Jesus. And in that, I can rejoice and be glad. And honestly, me and you just simply doing this podcast, and we've put out just a handful of episodes, have faced spiritual attacks from this, right? Our health. We've had situations in our lives. He mentioned his Nana. Things going on that we've not even shared with you on here going on in our lives. And we've struggled with it more so than we did before we ever decided to do this podcast. And it's because we know that we're speaking the word of God. And in that, there's power and it can encourage you. And whenever I feel those attacks coming, yes, in the moment, it sucks. Yes, in the moment, it hurts. But when I step back and I'm like, you know what? I can rejoice and be glad because the enemy's getting nervous. The enemy's scared. I've got the enemy on the ropes because he is trying to attack me because I am representing my God. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going through a situation, you can still be walking through it, but you can have a a rejoicing and glad spirit about you at the same time because you have a God who's going to walk hand in hand with you as you go through it. And you know what? Your reward is going to be great in heaven. And when you're walking in the face of persecution like this, you're walking in the same way that Jesus did. He walked in persecution, that the disciples did, the prophets did. All these people walked in persecution, and they're the heroes of the faith today. So if you feel like you're persecuted, you're walking in some good company. (laughs) The Savior of the world and everyone that represented him beforehand. And so in that, yeah, I can rejoice and be glad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got anything to add to that? I don't. Very well put. So... When you, if you guys are here watching this and you've watched up to this point and you've listened to us talk about the blessed, <laughs> okay, who, who could I look for if I want to talk to you about Jesus? Look for someone poor in spirit. Look for someone who maybe is mourning. Look for someone who's meek. Maybe someone who's hunger, who's truly hungry and thirsting for righteousness. Someone who's merciful. Someone who's pure in heart. Someone who's a peacemaker someone who's being persecuted because of righteousness, maybe someone who's being insulted, persecuted, and having all kinds of false, uh, evil falsely uttered against them because of their faith. If you want to encounter Jesus, I hope we've maybe shared with you why those are some really good people to seek after. Yeah. And uh, again, this is just the intro to the greatest sermon ever. You guys need to go read all Matthew 5. Me and TK talked about it for a while and Matthew 5 and then like it breaks it, into two chapters so yeah. 5 and 6 mm-hmm. but seriously the greatest sermon ever wrote is worth going and reading two chapters and you can literally do this and, and seriously well, I actually think it even goes uh, into chapter 7 too. it does go into chapter 7 you're right so yeah it's but like Zach said it's a great read um, just go read Matthew yeah just read Matthew just, just read any book of the Bible really. seriously <laughs> But there, there's so much power here. And I think, you know, here in the greatest sermon ever, you're hearing Jesus' words, but it's putting them into action where wisdom comes from. Yes. It's not just hearing them, but it's putting them into action. Here, Jesus is telling you, like, you want to be blessed? You want to find me? Here's people you can look for, and here's how to get blessed when you're acting in this way, too. So hear Jesus' words, put them into action. That's wisdom. Mm-hmm. That's true wisdom right there. And I, I just love this, man. This is arguably... My, some of my favorite chapters in all of scripture. I truly love this. And TK has had to hear me talk about this, like, basically since we went over this. And even we were progressing in Matthew, and we're, like, almost done with Genesis now. And I've continuously come back to this, like, I can't get enough of this. Um, I don't know. I've just, I really enjoyed this. And, again, maybe it's the pastor in me when I'm reading about the greatest sermon ever wrote. It's hard not to get inspired and fired up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's our little synopsis, if you will, of Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. Mm -hmm. The intro to the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. So, yeah, I loved it, man. Yeah, great chapter, baby. Encouraging just to just to read through this and do this podcast if you was encouraging to me. Oh, absolutely. And it's reciprocated as well. Like going through this, we feel like we've been going over this for like the past few months, but just sitting down and doing it and knowing we're getting to bless others for it, that's special. So anyway, you got anything further to add as we continue to uh close out, my friend? I don't believe so. 
We'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and we will wrap it up. So be right back. Well, we got our uh, third member of the podcast this week up here. Yeah. Still we on the show w- again. We have to watch out because he might go f- for a coffee. He likes coffee like I do. This dog legit, if, if TK and I have a hold of him, would be in one oh. of our coffees. Oh, he's, he's a squirrel. Hey, it's okay, buddy. <laughs> Told you, he's stealing the show, y'all. <laughs> but anyway, we hope you enjoyed this week's uh, Bless Up podcast. I know Nico did. But no, uh, <laughs> just, just walking... Walking through scripture like this and the power that flows out of it, I, I know it blesses us, so I hope it blesses you as well. Um, again, got some exciting things coming up. So next week is actually my Kobe anniversary. It is my and Emily's eight-year anniversary. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have a very special vlog coming out on our anniversary. So it's not going to come out on Saturday. It's going to come out um, the following Tuesday, which is May 30th on our anniversary. So be on the lookout for that. Um, this one's special. He goes cracking me up, man. Um, and then of course we got some news with some potential sponsors, like we said, moving forward, but, uh, got a few details to iron out with that and, um, continuing to stay consistent on this before we do that. So anyway, I think that's all we got for this week. Uh, we got some, we'll come back in a couple weeks with another new episode. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And I know God's going to have his hand on it. So, got anything to say before we end this, DK? Nico, Nico, say bye. Nico, can you say, say bye? bye, Nico? As he looks the other way. He's done with you guys. So, say there he is. Bye, guys. Well, guys, bye. we love y'all. We'll see you in the next one. Bless up. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Bless Up Podcast. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the page so you don't miss out on the exciting things God is doing as well as upcoming projects in store. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye.